California Democrats want to put legalized discrimination on the November 2024 ballot. We're fighting back. And Governor Gavin Newsom says it's time to get tough on crime. But then he offers nothing more than platitudes and a watered down reform package. We got all that coming up on Reform California. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and the stories we're looking at today uh, really show the hypocrisy and the dishonesty of California Democrat politicians. As we enter this election year at Reform California, we are gearing up to fight for reform, to put better people into office, and to take issues to the ballot box, stopping bad ideas from being passed and trying to enact reform through a number of ballot measures. We'll be talking about that throughout the year, but these stories, these top three stories that I'm looking at today, I think illustrate what we're up against. Uh, first and foremost, California Democrats, well, they wanna put legalized discrimination on the ballot. Here's a story from California Globe, which by the way, they do really good work and I wanna compliment them on um, them being basically a statewide source of news that you should be checking out that not, not liberal, very centrist. Um, check it out at californiaglobe.com. But it says California Democrats are pushing for legalized racial discrimination on the ballot again. And we're talking about uh, Assembly Constitutional Amendment, ACA 7. That is the bill number that we're uh, looking at. ACA 7 would reimpose racial preferences in the state of California. Now you might say, don't we already have racial preferences in the state of California? Yes, we basically do. Um, Democrats have embedded that um, woke, toxic uh, philosophy throughout a, a lot of government decisions and funding allocations. But in the 1990s, Proposition 209 was approved by voters in California. And it basically said, we don't want racial quotas or discrimination or affirmative action in contracting, hiring, or school admissions. Overwhelmingly, voters voted for Proposition 209. And as recently as the 2020 election, voters reaffirmed their support for Prop 209 by rejecting Prop 16 that was put on the ballot in 2020 that basically said, oh, let's just repeal Prop 209. Let's allow racial discrimination in hiring, contracting, and uh, school admissions. Uh, but now the Democrats will not take no for an answer. They are race baiters and dividers, and they want to put Assembly Constitutional Amendment 7 on the ballot in November. Uh, it's a bill uh, being sponsored by Democrat race baiter Corey Jackson, who says all cops are, are uh, racist. Uh, he also uh, believes that canine dogs uh, that are used by police are also racist. Um, the ACA 7 constitutional amendment uh, would repeal basically Prop 209. Now, they say it's not a repeal. What they say is um, ACA 7 will allow the governor to provide exemptions from Prop 209. But then it basically does not define what the limitation on exemption is. In other words, the governor can basically overturn all the language that voters approved with Prop 209 that would ban discrimination and race-based uh, quotas for hiring contracts and school admissions. So ACA 7 is nothing more than a dishonest uh, Trojan horse trying to gut Prop 209. And the media, of course, will not call out these lying Democrats for what they're doing. They'll say, oh, it's not a repeal of Prop 209. Prop 209 will still be in the state constitution. It allows the governor to declare certain exemptions. Well, that's a magic wand. That's broad, you know, uh, unbridled, unchecked authority of the governor to basically say, I don't want to do this anymore. And you know, Democrat governors are all in on affirmative action. And this is a like a zealotry uh, religion for them. Uh, they will uh, immediately overturn all of those um, equality provisions that really Prop 209 represents. My good friend, Gail Harriet is leading the no on ACA 7 fight. Uh, she actually has a website and I want you to check it out. No on ACA 7.org. That's the site. No on ACA 7.org. She's got a nice little petition up there that you can sign. And there's a whole uh, breakdown 
with a variety of um, uh, data and information about why discrimination uh, is uh, not only bad and unfair, but it's illegal. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against the various discriminatory uh, programs that Democrats are trying to implement by repealing Prop 209 with the uh, approval of ACA 7. Um, and so I really want to highlight this for you because the Democrats are going to put this on the ballot. I have no doubt about it uh, because they're going to play to their far left militant racist base. And we're going to have to fight the no campaign working with Gail Harriet. Uh, so at Reform California, we are absolutely opposed to ACA 7. And if it gets on the ballot, we will be urging a no vote on our voter guide and working with Gail and her team to mount an aggressive campaign. A little bit more on the Supreme Court on, on um, affirmative action and, and racism, because the media does not report what the Supreme Court has ruled is the law of the land um, because it's inconvenient. They don't want to talk about the law because Democrats are routinely, routinely breaking the law. In other words, they're breaking the U.S. Constitution. They're violating the Constitution. And remember, all officials are sworn to uphold the Constitution. So just like they, they do it in California against the Second Amendment and going after guns and implementing all sort of illegal and unconstitutional gun control laws repeatedly um, and then repeatedly getting swatted down by the Supreme Court and lower courts as well, Gavin Newsom and Democrats are wantonly violating U.S. Supreme Court uh, case law rulings uh, on um, uh, the fact that affirmative action programs and their race-based preferences, uh, the discriminatory race-driven uh, allocations of money, allocations of preference, contracts, jobs, et cetera, it all violates the U.S. Constitution, 14th Amendment equal protection requirements on, on state government. And so if if ACA um, 7 passes and we repeal Prop 209, uh, we will have a number of additional U.S. Supreme Court cases brought. Uh, and, and that's what Democrats know. They, they, they like passing illegal bills because they know that they get what they want for at least a little bit of time while we have to hire lawyers, file lawsuits, and wind our way through a very lengthy process to get um, relief at the Supreme Court. And it shouldn't be that way. That's predatory what they're doing and the, and the media knows it. But there are a number of cases that have been uh, handed down uh, dating back to the 60s, by the way, the 70s, the 80s. So it's not just a, a conservative Supreme Court uh, that the media thinks we have right now. This is um, many decades of rulings by the U.S. Supreme Court saying that affirmative action um, in many cases is illegal and unconstitutional that it can only be used in very narrow and very uh, nuanced and very data-driven or evidence-based uh, situations. Um, so I, I really encourage you to uh, pay attention to this fight because it is legalized discrimination that Democrats are trying to um, put in place in California. Now let's talk about Gavin Newsom. There's a crime wave in California. We've been covering it on this podcast for years and it's uh, only getting worse. We have laid out the case that the crime wave is because blue state and blue city leaders are coddling criminals. You know, we have a national crime reduction that we're seeing, um, but we are seeing crime problems in blue cities like New York and Chicago, Seattle and Portland, and throughout the entire state of California. Uh, the common thread there being that you have liberal criminal coddling Democrats that are in charge of all those areas. But nowhere is this seen more prevalent than in California, where you have both state and local blue Democrats uh, with bad policies. And so crime is up by double digits. We've got uh, smashing grabs. We've got homicides and violent crimes up. And a lot of it is traced back to three factors. Number one, Prop 47, release, uh, basically eliminating any punishment against criminals. Um, as well as George Soros prosecutors. So if you stop prosecuting crim criminals for their crimes, you have a crime wave. Number two, Prop 57, which allows early release of violent criminals uh, for good behavior. And of course, when you look at their records, they are not qualifying for good behavior. A lot of these guys uh, and gals are, are not behaving well, and they should be serving their, their full term 
um, or at least a substantial, more substantial portion of it. And third, we have so disparaged law enforcement in in California, um, making their jobs uh, impossible. And that's why we have a recruitment retention crisis going on right now in policing in California. Um, they know that um, the politicians are smearing them at every term, uh, calling them racist, calling them thugs, and that no matter what they do, there will always be hindsight 2020 applied to them. Uh, and they will be uh, potentially prosecuted and punished. Um, or worse, they may lose their life because they're hesitant to use force in a situation and something bad happens. So a lot of our cops are are leaving the state. We're training them and then they're going to other states. I've heard from police chiefs from other states uh, that say, thank you for sending us your, your best law enforcement officers by uh, mistreating them. And it's just terrible. So those are the three forces causing our crime to spike in California. What is Newsom doing about it? Nothing. Here's the political article, Newsom's property crime package sidesteps Prop 47. And look, if you if you don't deal with Prop 47, we will continue to have a crime wave. If you don't start prosecuting, if, 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 if you're not willing to prosecute criminals, criminals are going to know that they have a green light to continue to commit crimes. It's that simple. And yet Newsom wants to look like he's doing something on crime, but not actually. So, for example, uh, he's been making these uh, big announcements about, I'm sending the California Highway Patrol into San Francisco to help law enforcement. So he sends a couple guys to go do some patrols or some ride-alongs, and then they leave. It's all for show, my friends. It's not really going to deter crime. If he were serious about deterring crime, he would call for the repeal of Prop 47. But that's not what he's doing. Now, what is he, um, what is he proposing? Uh, he's proposing a, um, uh, a very nuanced, very narrow set of policy changes that would uh, look at um, uh, creating new categories of crimes, targeting professional offenders. Wait, wait. Professional offenders who have stolen things with the intent to resell them? Or people who resell large amounts of stolen goods? Well, what is that all about? Why not just repeal Prop 47? That sounds like we should just repeal Prop 47, but he's not wanting to repeal Prop 47. Instead, he says, we want to create new categories of crimes on paper so we can call them different things. And we're going to call certain criminals professional criminals. Make sure you get their personal pronouns right, too. So I'm not seeing anything in here that couldn't actually be accomplished if you, didn't, if you, if you just repealed Prop 47. Uh, they say that we're going to enhance penalties for people who resell large amounts of stolen goods. Okay. Um, well, if you have a George Soros prosecutor who doesn't even take the existing penalties and prosecute people, what the hell does enhanced penalties uh, give us? Plus with Prop 57, enhanced penalties mean, oh, well, you're going to get perhaps a slightly longer sentence with an enhanced penalty for this crime. Oh, but Gavin Newsom will let you out early with Prop 57. Again, this is all for show. Nibbling around the edges rather than dealing with the core problem. Oh, and then finally, Newsom wants to have a new task force. Yay! He's got a state retail task force that he wants to extend. Well, that'll scare the criminals. Better watch out. We're forming a blue ribbon committee to study the idea. Again, this is the insanity that we're up against. The media, of course, will tout it as something big and important. You know, Gavin Newsom cracking down on crime when in fact, no. He's just gaslighting us once again. Sort of like saying that the oil companies are um, responsible for price gouging in California on our $7 a gallon gas when in fact, wouldn't they be price gouging across the rest of the country? Why is our gas $2.50 more? Isn't it the gas tax? Isn't it all the regulations, the Green New Deal? Again, this guy is a liar, cheat, and a thief. And he's doing that on this issue of crime. One final thing I want to touch on, and that is um, the media's bias on this uh, U.S. Senate race. It, I saw this in Cal Matters, and I just have to poke at Dan Walters, the, uh, the guy who wrote it. Here's the headline. Republican Steve Garvey has a chance to play spoiler in California Senate race. <clears throat> and I saw that and I was like, a spoiler? What do you mean? 
Well, he goes on to say in this article, which is trash, he says, oh, you know, Adam Schiff was is leading in the polls. And until recently, Katie Porter, a Democrat, and Barbara Lee, a Democrat, were also in second place, you know, uh, vying to make it in the runoff. But along comes Republican uh, 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 Steve Garvey, and he's going to be a spoiler. Now, what does the word spoil mean? It means to ruin, right? To corrupt, to, to taint. He thinks it's a taint or a ruination or a corruption or a bad thing. If God forbid re re a Republican candidate make it into the runoff in November. Oh my goodness, the horror. Seriously, look at this. This whole article is based around that presumption that we shouldn't have a Republican in the runoff in November. That we should only be able to choose between two Democrats, being shot or being hung. Dumb or dumber. This is, again, Dan Walters, your bias is showing. And of course, I'm, I'm picking on him, but you know the the, the narrative and, and the the same um, perspective is infused throughout the coverage in California politics. I will tell you this right now: um, Steve Garvey may not be the perfect Republican in my eyes, but I would rather have a Republican that we can rally around in the runoff versus two Democrats. That's why Reform California has announced that we're endorsing Steve Garvey because he is the only Republican with a shot to make it in the runoff so that we aren't disenfranchised come November. Uh, my goal is to make sure that we have a choice in every competitive seat, in every seat period in November, or else we lose basically by being shut out. Um, one of the things that I'm going to need your help with in that regard is getting our voter guide out. Uh, we have about three weeks before ballots arrive in voters' mailboxes, and we're going to need your help because we're trying to print our voter guide and get about a million to a million and a half voter guides distributed to targeted homes in targeted seats. This voter guide is crucial because it breaks through the misinformation that the politicians put on the ballot, particularly those deceptive ballot measure descriptions that confuse voters into voting for bad things. Um, so I'm urging you to join our fight at reformcalifornia.org, chip in a contribution so we can print and mail uh, those um, voter guides and we can hire students to deliver them door to door and canvas neighborhoods. We are going to need your help. This primary is crucial. We don't want to be shut out of these various seats. So go to reformcalifornia.org, chip in a contribution. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.